Today we're diving in and creating subdomains. By the end of this video, you'll have the confidence and the understanding to set up subdomains for yourself, whether it be for your business locations or for staging websites. So first, let me try to explain what a subdomain is without all the jargon. Subdomains are everywhere and they're used to break up websites into different purposes, yet keep the same domain name as in yourwebsite.com could have a subdomain attached to it. And now it becomes staging.yourwebsite.com. These separated websites could look very similar or completely different because they are in fact separate websites. Separate websites with their own directory, their own files, and their own attached databases, if applicable. Some common examples of subdomain usage that you might not recognize are for stores, so they could separate their e-commerce shop from their main website. Locations for auto dealerships, where they could have separate teams manage the inventory from location to location. And mobile apps that allow you to have an account settings. These account settings are definitely separated from their main website. And mobile sites can be served up on a subdomain so that you would get a mobile version of their website, much like YouTube does. Hello, uh, everybody. Welcome back to the channel where my goal is to help you make better websites for your community, yourself, and your clients. I'm Chris Jules, and today we are tackling subdomains. The good news is that what you're going to learn here can be applied no matter where you got your subdomain. I got mine from Bluehost, so if you're ready, open your cPanel, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and let's get started. Okay, so here I am in the cPanel of my Bluehost dashboard. Most cPanels on the majority of hosting platforms look pretty similar. They have your options set up by different categories. Before we get started setting up our subdomain, I quickly want to go over some examples to make sure that we're all on the same page of what a subdomain is and how you might use one. We are going to be using a subdomain for a staging website. Um, it's pretty important that if you have a live website that you want to work in, that you don't do that to a live website, you would do it to a staging website so that you could make your state, your changes on your staging website and then push them to your live website. So here I am at a community website that I have. It's called MauiDGA.org and that is the main website. Okay. And here we are in one of our events. And as of now, this is what the page looks like when we enter a new event. So I have set up a staging website with a subdomain called staging.mauidg.org. And this is a separate WordPress installation, separate database and all. It's a separate website. The internet sees it as a separate website. When I make changes in here, nobody sees it. Anyone coming here doesn't see what I'm doing. And as you can see, I am working on the design structure of this particular page. And when I'm done, I will push this website to the new one and it will replace this design. So that's a staging website. That's a very popular use case for a subdomain is to create a staging website. Another reason to have a subdomain is popularly used if you have different locations. So Kia.com and let's say other places might have different locations. So they might have a California.kia.com. They might have a Idaho.kia.com, etc. And you can see here at Kia.com, they do have a subdomain called owners.kia.com. Now this is a separate website that is built to serve the owners. And it's because sometimes websites demand different functionality, a different team that maintains the website and has different things like uh, different server and hosting needs, uh, security, etc. So it's better just to create two websites instead of trying to cram everything that you need as a business into one website. Another reason to have subdomains would be like if you know WordPress.org gives you a subdomain when you create a website. So it would be your website.wordpress.org. And so that is another use case of a subdomain. So a subdomain also might be like, let's say this was your website and you wanted to create a shop, you might have shop your your site.com. So there's uh, several different use cases for subdomains. And one of the most popular ones is to create a staging site like I have here and I will be teaching you in the next video. So in this video, let's get started setting up our subdomain first. And as I said in the beginning, most cPanels are set up the same. For instance, here in InMotion, you'll see that if you go into your cPanel 
on most hosting platforms, they will have a section for domains. And then what you want to look for is subdomains. Since this domain lives on Bluehost, I will be doing this on my Bluehost. You want to be doing this on the hosting account that your domain lives on. Okay, so if you got your domain through GoDaddy, it's best to do it on there. And if your domain doesn't live on your host, you can have your domain name and your subdomain point to this host by changing your C name information, which we will go through in another video as well. So for now, hopefully you are your domain name, your main domain name lives on your hosting platform and that's where you need to go. Now, if you are on Bluehost, they like to do things different. And as if you see down here, you'll see no place to manage your domain name or to create a subdomain. So we need to come back to our Bluehost dashboard and you'll see down here, they have your settings and how you get to your C panel but here's their tab for the domain. So we're gonna go ahead and click on domains. On other hosting platforms, if you are in your C panel, just go to where it says create a subdomain. And what we could do is go down here to subdomains, or you could go to your actual main domain, which ours is yourdiviwebsite.com. You could go to manage and come down here to go to subdomains. Okay, and it brings us to this screen where it says that we have not added any subdomains. And if we have created subdomains, they would have a list here that we could access and edit. So we're gonna create add subdom subdomain. Now these steps are pretty similar on most hosting platforms. They shouldn't get much more difficult than this. So just follow along whatever cPanel you are in. What we want is your subdomain will appear to the left of your domain name like this, subdomain.domain.com. So we're gonna create a staging one. So this is gonna be called staging. And if you had multiple domains on this hosting platform, your list of domains that you want this added to will be here. Okay, so we have no subdomain attached to this domain here, so we're gonna go ahead and click it. Now, the home folder is also known as the document root, which is where your files are going to live, okay? If you wanted to change that, you could do that here, otherwise it will create the file folder for you. And this is gonna live under our home, under the public HTML, and it's gonna create that for you. So we've set up, make sure everything is spelled correctly and press add domain. Okay, and you'll see it has our subdomain here and all the information that goes with it. And so now I want to show you in your cPanel where this information will live. Let's go to advanced. And this takes us back to our cPanel where most of you are probably are anyways. And let's just go to our file manager and you'll see our root system is here. And if we go to public HTML and open it up, you'll see we have staging-yourwebsite.com. All right, so by now you have your own subdomain set up. Check out this video where I show you how to place a fresh install on that domain. Like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.